Hi guys! I've been asked to do some video about how I do cross my potatoes and I've seen the first flowers develop on these um, salad blue. They're grown in a bucket and the second row of my early potatoes is also starting to make flowers. So that's perfect opportunity to do a video on how to cross or how to cross pollinate potatoes. Um, basically it's like crossing any other crop like um, tomatoes or peppers um, with some special things for potatoes because not all potato varieties are making pollen. There's some which don't make any pollen and there's some which make pollen but are not good in setting berries and keeping the berries so you will get good seeds from them. Salad blue, that's the first year I'm growing them but um, it is very well known for being very fertile. It's a great berry setter and it's having really 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 lots of pollen. At least that's what I've been told. So what I'm trying to do is crossing an early potato with a main crop potato so they wouldn't have flowers at the same time. But since I started these ones in a bucket they're ahead of their time. I have some other salad blue in the beds and they're too small to have flowers yet. So if you plan to, to cross breed varieties with different flower dates, plant the later flowering variety in a bucket and just start them early. Um, I want to use these salad blues as um, the mother plant. So these ones are supposed to keep the berries. Because I want to harvest my early potatoes and if I need to wait for the berries to develop uh, I wouldn't like to do that. So first step is to look at your flowers. This one is already starting to open and it is possible that it already can shed some pollen. I will just open the flower. That's a little bit hard to do with one hand. So there it is. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's already possible that the pollen from here has already shed and pollinated this flower. So this flower is too old for trying to crossbreed with it. Here we are having a closed flower and some flower buds which are even younger. So these ones are the ones you would want to use for a cross because they have not self-pollinated yet. And the first thing to do is to open the flower carefully and to remove the leaves of the flower so you can have easy access to the flower. 
Um, since I'm standing in the middle of the garden, I don't have something to set you up so you can see what I'm doing. I still try to to keep things visible. We'll see. No, it's just my thumb. Um, I will open it and show you the result. So here I have removed the flower petals just with my fingernails and now I will remove the male part of the flower which is shedding pollen to avoid having it fertilize the own flower. So, just a second. And it's no, nothing very difficult, just grab the pollen sack and remove it. So, here we have all the pollen sacks removed and just the female part of the flower is left and when you're removing the little pollen um, be careful to not hurt the middle part of the flower because on the end of it the little green end you can see there should go the pollen from the other variety. So I'm going to remove some more of these. So I have them prepared and I'm going to remove all the other flowers because there is the risk of them pollinating these when they're shedding pollen and the wind comes um, it can interfere with what you had in mind so it's safest to just sacrifice some of the younger flowers um, so that's what I'm going to do just a second so here we are I have taken away all the pollen sacs from the flowers and removed all the younger flowers um, and that's just the last one and how to remove it is pinch it off you don't need any fancy tools for cross-pollinating things. So that's the four flowers I want to pollinate. And how to bring over the pollen from the other potato variety. As you can see, the flowers are old enough to be open, but they're not open. Why have they closed? The simple reason for this is it's afternoon and potato flowers close very early during the day. So the best time to try to get some pollen from these will be in the morning and um, for collecting pollen there's many different ways of doing it my quick and dirty garden method for doing it is to just tip on the flower and have a shiny dark surface under it um, most times I'm using the back of my phone or sunglasses so 
tomorrow morning I will show you how to get the pollen from some of these flowers and as you can see the, this variety is not keeping all the flowers it's discarding young flowers very early and easy so that's not a variety to use for um, producing berries if you can avoid doing that it makes life easier if you have a variety which develops proper flowers and um, doesn't discard early flowers like this one they just drop off so that's probably not a good berry keeper I've never seen this variety keep its flowers for long or setting any berries and I actually don't know I don't remember if it produces any pollen I hope so but best thing to try is early in the morning so that's where we will continue good morning good morning here we are with the most important thing when trying to cross pollinate things in the morning drink coffee first so I don't mess up things um, I'm not a morning person I enjoy being in the garden in the morning looking at the plants um, to slowly wake up but I usually don't talk during that so I hope I'm not talking rubbish um, so usually I'm using the back of my phone to collect the pollen because it's shiny and black but you can also use some sunglasses and I just put the sunglasses or the shiny black surface under the flower and then tip on the flower and you can see it is shedding pollen because focus and a bug but there you can see the yellow stuff on the surface is pollen from one of my early potatoes so that's all you don't need a knife or anything for collecting the pollen um, there's thousands of methods of collecting the pollen like taking away the pollen sack and scraping it with a scalpel that's way too dangerous in the morning for me more coffee <laughs> And it just works fine that way for me. So we're just going over to the plants where I removed the pollen sacs yesterday. And now it's just trying to focus things and bringing the sunglasses over and then dipping Oop, now my fingers are in the way try to do it here so just dipping there 
and that's what you do um, yeah two three mornings in a row to make sure the flowers are properly pollinated um, I will wrap this one in some garden fabric I have over there to make sure that pollen from the other flowers isn't shedding on this one. Um, normally I'm using a tea bag um, but I noticed I'm out of tea bags um, so garden fabric is nice too Here we are in the kitchen. I took one of the potato flowers off because it's just easier to show you how I remove the flower petals and the pollen sacs from them with two hands. Um, that's not a flower from um, What was it? Salad blue. Um, that's one of my flowers from um, Blue Congo offspring. Um, I'm growing some of the tubers of the small tubers I got of last year's TPS grown plants. I'm growing again this year to see how they how they do if they're a keeper or not. And that was one I had on hand um, because Salad Blue is not starting to flower too much yet. So all I do is choosing a flower bud which is pretty young because the pollen sacs are not developed properly and not shedding pollen yet. So first thing I do is to remove the flower petals um, just for easier access to the flower and um, the flower petals are the guidance for insects also so if you remove them the flower is less visible and attractive for bees so that's how it's looking after removing the flower petals and now I'm just taking off the pollen sacs, the immature pollen sacs. So that's easy. You don't need any tools. If you have fingernails you can use them um, for just snipping off the pollen sacs and that's what's left that's the female part of the flower and on the tip of it there you should put the pollen from the other variety to cross two varieties and you can see the little knot at the bottom that's where the berry is going to develop. So that's all. Not rocket science. Just try it. And I hope you found this useful. And good luck with crossing your own varieties. Have fun.